I thought this game was going to be hot garbage. In fact, oh, for anything like hot. me, you can look up Grease on Steam right now and probably come to the same conclusion. Now keep in mind, the reviews for this game are mostly positive, but it's those positive reviews that made me come to the conclusion, as I'm sure you would, that this is another pretentious and ultimately soulless walking simulator that reviewers just happen to eat up like cocks. Super game. The reviews tended to focus on the emotional aspect of the game, that, that it was an emotional experience, that it made some people cry because of the art and the music, and it made little to no reference to the gameplay outside of the fact that it was simple, which I shouldn't have to point out is not a good sign for a game. It was also often pointed out that the game's duration was just over the time allowed for a refund on Steam. Coincidence? I think not! And if that was all I had seen of this game, I probably would have just not fucking played it. I don't like to torture myself, it's not something I go out of my way to do, so when it comes pretty clear that a game is not going to be good, I just don't play it. But then I saw this review, just advertised on the Steam page. Grease is a great example of why video games can be, and actually are, art. And that was, <laughs> that put me over the line. That's one of those lines, it's, it's, it's echoed a lot. It's one of those things that game journalists like to do, where they like to make themselves feel better about a medium that they don't actually believe is that well respected, or maybe they don't respect it that well themselves. It seems like they're sort of insecure about the fact that they cover games. And so they're still trying to make these arguments about like, look at this, look at that. Clearly games are art, where everyone who fucking plays games, one, probably doesn't care whether games are art or not, or two, believes that they are. And on top of that, they tend to pick games that usually, for some reason or another, are less games than other ones, if you know what I'm trying to say there. That, that when they're trying to prove that games are art, they try and find the games that are most like movies, instead of finding the games that are most like games. It would seem like a good game would prove your point that games are art, but I guess I'm not a games journalist. And so this, this really cemented in my mind two things. One, that this game must be absolute journalist bait garbage, and two, that I have to play it because I figured that if nothing else, I was going to run into a game that would be pretty fun to pick apart. And so I came into this with every intention of just tearing it to pieces. I, I was going to play the game completely because apparently, I mean, it's just on over the refund time, so I can't refund it, so I picked it up on Google Games. Figured I'd play it completely, torture myself, get through that, and make a funny video about it, right? Been a while since I made something that I just tore something apart. So, I figured it was a nice, nice change of pace after I just rambled for 50 minutes about how good Nier Automata was. So I picked it up. I bought the game. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of strange, actually. And, <laughs> and when I first started the game up, I, I felt vindicted. I really, like, there was no settings when you start the game up. Uh, once you actually get into the game, you can go into the settings, but of course you don't know that when you start it. So there are no settings, you can't change the resolution, or the graphics quality, or the controls, or anything like that. And so you just start, you can use a controller, the controller works, you probably should use a controller if you don't have one, you're, you know, you're stuck with flash game controls, but you start it up, and it pretty quickly made me think I was in the right, that I was at a 100% right in my, in my assumption, because first, it sort of did away with any expectation of what everyone else called good art by immediately showing the main character, which uh, pretty quickly solved the mystery of the title of this game. If you're wondering what Grease means in Norwegian, it means pig. Please clap. Then the game actually starts, game quote unquote, and you're allowed to move left or right, and to continue the game, you simply hold the analog stick to the right. And at that point, I felt pretty much like I had made a decent conclusion that this was going to be a walking simulator where I would continue to hold right on my controller, maybe occasionally stopping to take in the scenery, and that that would be that. I would be doing that for the next three hours, and it would be nothing more than a movie where I have to hold down the play button. I was, I was wrong. <laughs> I, think, I think you might realize that by the title of this video. I was, I was pretty wrong. The game keeps going, and, and it even though I really had every intention and every expectation of hating the game, 
it slowly started to prove me wrong. Uh, the, the art, it got quickly much better. The music was very good. And eventually even the gameplay, believe it or not, started to win me over. An hour or two into the game, I was I was cracking a smile. I was I was baffled with myself that like I was actually enjoying some of the things that were going on. And by the end of it, the end of the three hours, it really did end up being just over three hours. I I liked it. I like the game. But now I find myself in in a, the bad boy position, in a position you're not allowed to be in, which is. You're allowed to have one of two opinions when it comes to an art game like this. You're either allowed to be a journalist and or one of the people who eats up what journalists put out, and you can say that this game is an absolute masterpiece, 10 out of 10, best game ever, complete art, no flaws. Or you're allowed to say that this game is absolute garbage, debatably not a game, has no redeeming features. And... I think this game is good, and I, I think I can feel justified in saying that it's a game, which is something I didn't expect, but it's not perfect. I, I don't think it's even close to perfect, and certainly as a game, despite the fact it's not a bad game, but as a game, it, it is lacking in some things. And after all, it is a three-hour game, not that the length dictates the worth, but... In some respects, it, it does. Filling her with cock meat, giving her the real fuck she is hers. Basically, this, the rest of this video is me trying to justify my opinion, mostly to the people who normally watch these videos and are expecting me to absolutely despise this, uh, but also to people who might watch this who are new to the channel, who expect this to be some sort of amazing piece of art, which I only somewhat agree with. <laughs> First of all, one of the major selling points of this game is obviously the art. And the art is better than I expected. They didn't do they didn't pull their strongest move by putting their face up at the beginning of the game. I don't think they did a good job on the face. I think I've made that clear and I think it speaks for itself. Luckily, the art does speak for itself. There's not too much to say about it, uh, but it's it's definitely got a minimalistic art style. A lot of the things in the game are boiled down to basic shapes. Art style that would remind me of something like Celtic or Greek art, but more of a romanticized version of that. Like, not necessarily Celtic art like you'd find on some artifact, but Celtic art like what someone thinks of when I say that. You know what I mean? A, a very much romanticized version of that kind of older, simplistic art. And and it, it is simplistic. A lot of it... Like I said, a lot of it is boiled down to basic shapes. Even the main character at some point becomes a little more than a triangle. But they do a lot with a little. And it doesn't feel like they're just being lazy. It feels like they're trying to get the most with the least. They're trying to express something with an art style. Uh, and it comes off very well. Uh, a lot of the reviews on this said that it's it's a, a wallpaper simulator. Uh, in fact, quite a few reviews were talking about how the best part of this game is taking screenshots. I didn't take a single one, <laughs> so so maybe I missed out on the full experience. Certainly I see what they're talking about, but I think it kind of sells the game short by saying it's good for wallpapers. Uh, you can, if you, if you want wallpapers, just watch the game on YouTube. You don't really need to play it. Uh, and besides that, that doesn't really sell a, that doesn't really convince someone that an entire game is good. But it's true. They look they look good. I, I think better than just a wallpaper because it also is it moves. A wallpaper is still, but there's parts in this game that that look good also in motion. The movement of your character across the landscape. Uh, but I think generally they're right. It does look, it is a very good looking game. And another thing that I think people are right about when it comes to these reviews is the music. The music is, well, I was gonna say very good, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna confuse anyone by, it's atmospheric. And as atmospheric music, I think it does its job very well. It's very emotive. And the music often fits very well with the themes going on in the game. 
Uh, I'd like to go into that a little bit more in a second, but there's, it, it's very fitting for everything that's going on, and it's very well done. Um, I was a big fan, especially of a lot of the little electronic touches to make it not just, it, it's, it's got its own feeling. Uh, at a few parts, I believe they may have outright stolen a sound from Nier Automata. I, <laughs> I've listened to this sound in Nier Automata so many times that I'm pretty sure it's the exact same sound, but that's fine. It's not even the level of plunder phonics. That's just plain sampling. That is okay. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was interesting. But the music is quite good, and that's another thing that can kind of speak for itself. I can just play that in the background. You can hear some of it. Uh, hopefully I can play in the background. We'll see when this is done. But it's good, and it's emotive, and it, and it does its job. There's more to talk about with that when I get into something a little later. Sneak sneak peek on that one. Little uh, little keep tuned, little tease. Uh, and then we get to the gameplay. And the gameplay is both, for me, the strongest point and the weakest point. And what I mean by that is the gameplay was the most surprising to me, and so it stands out in my mind as one of the best points about the game, because I, you know, the art and the music, I was going into this completely expecting them to possibly be good. That didn't surprise me when the music or the art was good. The gameplay surprised me. I, I expected nothing. I expected to be holding right. I expected the average walking simulator, but in 2D. So when I ended up getting more than that, it's it stands out in my mind as quite a good point. But if you look at it, as a, at it objectively, the gameplay isn't necessarily special in itself. And what I mean by that is it does actually do a lot more with the gameplay than just holding right. There's a lot of platforming involved, but it also does more than just having you jumping around. You get different abilities as the game progresses, and you have to use those abilities to solve puzzles. But none of the puzzles are hard. None of the platforming will take you more than maybe at the end of the game, three tries, max. And none of the abilities or the ways that they're used are necessarily new. I mean, the abilities boil down to uh, the first ability is a mix between a ground pound and iron boots. Not exactly, not exactly new stuff. The second one is very simply a double jump. Again, not exactly new. And the third one is the ability to swim. Um, we're not, we're not really falling into the into the original category, but they do a lot of things with it that are creative. They use them well, and they use them. A hell of a lot better than I expected, and I think that's the biggest, the biggest point I can make here. And this is sort of a good time to say that the gameplay, as well as the art, as well as the music, by themselves are fine. But I don't think any one of them is exceptional. The, the art and the music are definitely contenders, but especially the gameplay I would not call exceptional except in the way that these three things support the theme. And this is the one point where I almost see what people are saying by saying this game is real art. And in fact, I, I kind of agree. I just don't think it's a masterpiece. But it does something that a lot of art games especially don't do. And if there's one thing that you want to do to make your game art, it's this. It's to incorporate the different aspects of the game into some sort of theme. And this is where we get into what you could call the story. And so I guess this could be spoiler territory. This game doesn't really have a story. And what story it does have is implied. It's not told to you. This game has no dialogue. This game has no writing. So this, and it has basically, if you're being generous, three characters. Uh, and that's being very generous. But... On top of that, it's really more of almost an interpretation. I think it's a pretty obvious interpretation, but I could be wrong. So this, even if this was a spoiler, it might be wrong. So I'm warning you because if, if, if any of this has convinced you so far, you might just want to go and check the game out. Um, you know, maybe play it for an hour and then refund it if you don't like it. It's not a very long game, so you'll get a very good, you know, slice of the game by playing for an hour. But 
I will be going into some of those details, so you, you've been warned. This game is about grief. It's about overcoming loss. And I, I think it sounds almost like the premise of the game, but I didn't know this going in. I don't think anyone knew this going in. I don't think it says anything about it on the Steam page. Of course, if I'm wrong, then I'm disappointed because it really, I don't think it should. But it's about overcoming grief. And your main character goes through the five stages of overcoming grief grief and every part of the game changes to fit with that stage of grief so so before the game starts somebody has died some woman and, and, and throughout the game you come across statues of that woman and whenever you stand in the palm of her hand which is reminiscent of the beginning of the game you have like a fucking breakdown and gets and and continue on to the next part of the process of overcoming loss. And so the beginning of the game is just is is the shock. The the game is kind of colorless and there's not much going on and it's just the the initial it's it's happened the, the main character loses her voice and she's just overcome with pure shock. And then it goes into the next few stages with everything changing. Next it goes into anger where the music often gets very intense and very Almost, I don't know, I wouldn't call it scary, but it, that's sort of the impression you're supposed to get. The la the landscapes get red. It becomes a desert. Obviously, deserts are associated with hot. Hot being associated with anger, fire, you know, like everything changes around that. And then the gameplay, the different techniques you get while playing the game have to do with how you overcome those things. So, for instance, the first one, anger, the ability you get is to turn into a giant, it's basically a fucking square, but you, you turn into a solid, immovable object, which could be representative of holding fast against the, the storm brewing inside of you, which is represented in the game as a literal storm trying to push you away. You're, you're able to learn to st stand fast against those emotional storms. And every other part of the game does a similar thing. After that, you get into bargaining that's why the game goes into sort of a more green it's it's the part of hope it's where the maybe one other living character if you can call it that is in the game and and again that continues then you go into depression where the game is being flooded by rain obviously very simple symbols there rain is pretty pretty universal for sadness as well as a lot of the stage takes place underwater on, that's a common feeling of depression is being underwater you feel like you're underwater and then it goes into after that acceptance where you're you're accepting the fact that this has happened but that doesn't mes necessarily make it okay and so this game expresses that as sort of the difference between light and dark and things are getting better and you're 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 able to move on but there's still that that darkness there because you're not okay with the fact that the loved one is gone you just have accepted it, which is allowing you to move on. And I don't want to really spoil anything more than that, but it's I don't really consider it a spoiler because after you get to one, you know, the second or third stage, I think it becomes somewhat obvious, but I, I could be reaching, of course. That's the thing. <laughs> Any, all of this could be not true, uh, in which case I would maybe have to change my opinion of the game. But, but I mean, the author is dead, not, not literally, but metaphorically, so I, I still feel fine doing this. Uh, and it's that element that really elevates this game to me. Um, there's also, I didn't even mention, there's a, a another symbol. There's, at every stage of this game, not every, I don't know if the first, like, one has it. But, like, at, at most of the stages in this game, there's also a symbol of depression, which is just this black mass that changes into different animals or different symbols. It's a black bird, and then it changes into a black thing I don't <laughs> but it seems to be a symbol of the the classic symbol of depression as a disease as opposed to depression as just a stage of grief a natural thing you go through because the fourth stage of grief is depression but it doesn't mean a mental illness it doesn't mean you're like clinically depressed it means just sadness a natural sadness uh, whereas which is symbolized in this game by the blue the rain all of that 
Um, but this black thing symbolizes depression as an illness, like like the the falling into depression. And so when it's chasing you around and it, it confronts you at certain parts of the game, that's the risk of depression. That's the risk of not of not going through these stages of grief, of not accepting it, of not being able to move past it and falling into pure depression. And the symbol I think works quite well. It's you know, like it starts out as a I mean I mean like one of the ones early on is a black bird. And it just reminded me immediately of the black dog, which is a common phrase for depression as an illness, is the black dog. It, you know, it bites and it doesn't let go. It <laughs> so I, that's, that's the thing that, that really makes this game, I think, worth it. And really makes this game good, is that everything in it is used to further the theme. And it's not just a, a movie with gameplay tacked on. The gameplay also helps to move forward the theme. The gameplay expresses how you're overcoming these things, how the main character is overcoming these things. And it's weird because most art games, even if they do strip out the gameplay, they usually don't get it right with the art and music either. Usually the art and music are just kind of there too. Maybe they'll make it look nice, but they don't really do anything with it. And it's, it's worth pointing out, this is not something that is new to video games. It just isn't. I like like having the gameplay especially represent some thematic thing mean more than just the gameplay itself is not new at all. But surprisingly, ironically, it's not really even surprising if you've, you've been paying attention, I guess. It's the it's new for art games to be doing something like this. Every other game has figured it out. Not every other game, obviously, but a lot of good games have figured it out. This one, this genre really never did. And I think this this is maybe a step forward. Maybe art games can actually, maybe I just haven't been playing enough art games, so I think I've played a fair few and um, they're usually not not too great. And and very shallow is something that's that, again, is ironic that a, an art game would be shallow. Um, this one I think has a little more going on, and it's it's definitely, I think that connection between all of the elements of the game is what makes it worth it. Uh, which okay, now it sounds like I'm I'm sucking at dick, and I, I I'm really a big fan of it. It's a perfect ten out of ten. I'd like to point out that that's that's not true. I never sucked any ding dongs. Because for one, like I said, it's not doing anything new, especially with the gameplay, and, and even with this type of game, I do have to put quite a big uh, priority on how good the gameplay is, because ultimately it is supposed to be a game. And the gameplay, like I said, is much better than I expected, and works well into the theme, but it's not amazing. And the theme itself is good, I think it's handled very well, but as far as I can see, there's not any more depth in it that would lead you to play it a second time. And I think that's a, a big point, not just with games. Games, obviously, replayability is a big selling point for a lot of stuff. But I think books and movies generally get better as you watch them or better as you read them because you get more out of it. You're discovering new things that you hadn't noticed before, new connections, new themes. Um, I don't think there's any more with this. If I'm wrong and someone's played this game twice already, or notice something I didn't. I'm not talking about little symbols. There are other symbols I didn't mention, obviously. But, you know, if there's some sort of greater theme I didn't notice or something like that, feel free to correct me. Maybe this game is worth a second playthrough. But I think it does lose quite a bit of points because it doesn't seem like it is. It seems like the, the theme is, is well explored in these three hours that it lasts, but it's not any deeper than that. And the gameplay is certainly not enough that you would play it again just, just for the fun of it, like you would most games. Well, not, <laughs> not most games, most games are shit. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Oh my God, stop fucking lying. But, <laughs> you know, that's just how it is. 90% of everything is shit. But most people's favorite games, they would replay over and over. Even if this was somebody's favorite game, I doubt they would replay it that often. My point here is that it's, it's good. It's much better than I expected. It is miles ahead of where I expected. 
and I think it's way better than most people expected, but it's not good as it's not as good as other people say. It's not perfect. It's only advancing the medium, as some of them might be apt to say, in the sense that it is advancing this backwards genre. And so I, my, my ultimate conclusion is that it's a good game. I think it's worth playing, but I don't think it's amazing. I don't think it's a masterpiece, except when you think of the context that it is an art game. And so when you compare Greece to other games, other classic games, other games you might call masterpieces, I don't think it necessarily stacks up that well. But when you compare it to other games of its genre, I believe Greece might very well be the best art game yet made. Wait. Super Columbine Massacre RPG is an art game? Forget everything I said. Columbine wins again.